Today I'm doing a quick tutorial on how to install Suzy Linux. This is an enterprise Linux solution, which means it does come with support and it is not free, unfortunately. But, but it has been supported on different hardware platforms. When it, if you need that 99% uptime, you need your bosses demanding, you know, no downtime, then going with us hardware, an operating system that's been tested on hardware is definitely the way to go. And Suzy Linux is definitely one of these operating systems that has been tested by the vendor to guarantee a certain level of functionality on hardware. So definitely try this. If, of course, if your company can afford it, there's tons of great open source solutions, but if your company can afford it, then you could have someone to call if you're having problems troubleshooting any sort of issue on your machine. So just keep watching. I'll show you how to, quick it is to install the CZ Linux operating system and all the options that come with it during the installation. First thing we need to do is download the CZ ISO, which can be downloaded at suzy.com. You go ahead and click on products. They have Suzy Linux Enterprise Server. So go ahead and download the 60 day free trial of this installation. It will take you to a page that lists the different hardware platforms it's supported on. As you notice, most popular hardware platforms are listed here. So I'm going to go ahead and download my 64 bit Intel AMD 64 processor download. This is for most 64 bit systems. And we're going to go ahead and download two ISO images. So go ahead and proceed to download that red tab on the far right. And you can go to activation code on below if you want to try out their support. If you don't, you just download the ISO. You're going to have to register for this download. So go ahead and register, get your account, and it will download your ISO image. Once it's downloaded, you can go ahead and burn that on a DVD. Or if you have some kind of network management tool like an ILO port or IPMI port configured, you can go ahead and do a network boot with a virtual disk. If that's the option, these are the installation options that we come to boot from hard drive. We want to do the installation option, the second option there, once it boots from the disk. If you go ahead and select that, it will start loading the Linux kernel, the installation kernel. It will guide you through the rest of the installation. The first menu it will bring you to will show you a list of options on the far left. These are the steps you're going to take to complete the installation. So first it brings you to the welcome screen. You can select your language and keyboard layout. Select agree to the licensing agreement as stated. If you pull down the pull down menu, you'll see a number of languages and keyboard layouts listed. Go ahead and select your language and region of your keyboard and go ahead and hit next once it's selected. There will be an option later where you can test out the keyboard option. So don't worry if you're unsure about your keyboard layout. Once you hit next, it'll bring you to the media check option. If you're unsure about your media download for any reason, go ahead and run the check here. Hit next when completed. It now will check your system hardware. It'll take a few minutes to probe all the devices attached. In most cases, you can select a new installation. If you're doing any sort of upgrade, you might want to select that second option or if any kind of repair, it's that third option. In most cases, it's new installations. Go ahead and hit next to continue. It'll ask you for what region of the world you are from to do your time zone. Go ahead and click in the region that you are nearest to and hit next when done. It will automatically set your time zone accordingly. You can hold it, go ahead and select the region and time zone pull down menus on the bottom there to select the region if you don't, if you're unsure. Next it will ask you about the server based scenario, a physical machine or a virtual machine. If you're testing out this environment, you be, might be running in a virtual environment. So go ahead and select virtual machine. Zen virtualization and KVM are different virtualization environments and depending on which one you're running on you might select that. If you're running VMware you go ahead and run virtual machine right there. If it's a physical hardware of course you select that first machine where it's a full on operating system on a physical device and not virtualized at all. Once you select your scenario go ahead and hit next. It will do some driver settings accordingly depending on the scenario you are selecting. Next it will be going under installation. So first it's going to give you an overview of your installation options you'll be selecting. You go ahead and hit expert tab so it gives you some additional options that you can go ahead and configure. So some of the things you can configure here is the system settings. You can review that. The keyboard layout you can change here from what you selected earlier. Partitioning if you want to change how your disk will be partitioned out. That's probably the most common. Your boot option. So if you have a dual boot this is where you select that. If we click on the partitioning here we go ahead and customize. I select for expert. If you're unsure what to do here, don't select this option, but if you're more familiar, go ahead and select it. So I'm going to select and you go ahead and select the drive you're going to be installing it on. Of course, be careful what drive you're selecting and partitioning here because if it's not the installation drive, it will rewrite and reformat whatever drive you are selecting here. So we go ahead and choose the file system type as well if it's primary and the mount points. You can do all the normal formatting options here. 
of course, like any Linux distribution, the minimum you need is slash boot to be a physical partition, and then you could have a logical uh, partition, a virtual group, and logical partitions after that, so it makes it more flexible later on when you want to readjust size. You could also add partitions here. Standard is the three partitions, swap, slash boot, and slash. But go ahead and add additional partition if you want the extra security of the mount options that come with having separate partitions for slash home or slash user or slash opt. Next option that you're able to select is the software that's going to be installed. That first one that will show you the software that will be selected. Now it brings you to this checkbox option where you click the checkbox for software that you wish, additional software you wish to install. It will give you some details on the left hand side which is very nice. It gives you a short summary of any of the software packages. If you're new to this environment, I recommend going through the software list so you have a better understanding of what software is available on boot. If you're setting this up for a specific kind of server like DHCP or DNS, you go ahead and select that option here. Once you're ready, you go ahead and select languages um, right here. This is You could change it what you initially set at the initial installation. You go ahead and confirm your installation option and it will begin the install. This will take a few minutes to go through the installation and once you're ready it will go ahead and take you on to the configuration. Now it's actually installing the software and repartitioning your hard drive now. Once it's done you can begin the configuration options. The first option to configure is the root password. Be sure you select a complicated password, uppercase, lowercase numbers, and special characters for this password and of course do not share it out. It does become a vulnerability if the password is too easy. You go ahead and test your keyboard layout in that box provided below. Next you're going to provide the host name as well as the domain name as well here. If there's no domain you go ahead and leave that blank. If you want to have this as a server you probably don't want to have it changed via DHCP unless you configure DHCP server with some kind of reservation. The next option to configure is your general network settings. Um, if you have an option here to go with traditional settings and enable IPv6. So you go ahead and select those options here. You also have the option as your firewall. You can see by default it is enabled. You can open up your SSH port. By default it is closed. I went ahead and opened up my SSH port here so I could do remote uh, management. You can do your configure network interface. If you're on DSL or ISDN settings, you can configure that here. Go ahead and hit next one complete. It will take a second to test your network setting and then continue on. It's going to prompt you for the customer server configuration. If you have an account, you go ahead and set it up here and you can register your system. If you do not, you go ahead and skip that option and continue on. The next option is services. So if you have a network service that you want running on here, like Open LDAP or another type of service you want to run, go ahead and select that option here. If you do not, go ahead and select the default and continue on. The next one is going to prompt you about authentication. If you want the local accounts with slash etc password, or you have some kind of LDAP or NIS authentication, you can select that here. You create a local user account, always recommended in case you get locked out for any reason, or if you want to use S as you do for security reasons, go ahead and create that local account and you can give this account privileges later. It's going to write the system configurations and take a minute to do that. And once it's done, it's going to prompt you with some information and your installation is pretty much complete from here. So some release notes you can review if you want to know anything new about this specific release of CZ Linux, which is 11 update 3. Now it's going to probe for some additional hardware such as your printer or sound card. And once it does that, it will detect the settings on there. It will go ahead and save your card sound card settings and your installation is pretty much complete now. The very last thing it's going to do is cloning the system. So it's going to create some kind of clone file that will be can be used later if you want to use it to create other installations, very similar installations to this. At this point, the system will reboot and will bring you to your login screen. Go ahead and log in with the account you created, the local account or the root account, and log into your desktop here. Now, once you log in, this is your desktop environment. It is the KDE desktop. You go ahead and open up your terminal by right clicking on the desktop there or you can click on computer on the bottom left and it will give you some software options. Now these software options are some of the software that you selected during the installation. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you are using this in your environment and saving yourself some sleep at night. Right guys? Sleep. So good. So just let me know if you're using a supported operating system or open source actually. And I'd be curious to know and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Oh, like if you like.
don't do anything if you don't like it.